people think that in order to connect with people and to have a conversation, they need to actually be there in order for you to talk to them. But thanks to technology, we don't have to wait. to the relationship theory everyone my name is a the emotional doctor here we take thoughts in we break them down we build them up and we play them out today's going to be a very special episode it's going to be on johnny depp and amber heard i want this to be a reaction to abba and preach's video i think they covered a lot of things pretty well i think they expressed particular sides that need to be expressed along with the ambiguity that naturally comes with the way that they cover videos. Shout out to them. I, guys, hey, I enjoy your content. I love it. You make me laugh. You make me think. Generally, I agree with you, so I don't, I'm not thinking all that much as much as I am just filling in empty spaces, but thank you nonetheless. So what I want to do on this episode here is corroborate my feelings by sharing my story. That's how I want to do this. This Johnny Depp situation means a lot to me. It means so much to me. And one of the things I actually want to highlight when I was watching our Ben Preacher's video is that the way that they were carrying themselves throughout covering what they were covering about this story was evidence of this one solid, solid fact. And it's, it's, it's impossible to miss. And it's this. The acceptance, the demure acceptance of something that you don't want to accept and you know it. You can see how their bodies were lumbering around and it's like you want it to be okay, but there isn't anywhere to move because what's, what is happening and what you're experiencing is actually something that is suffocating. It's suffocating. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to look. There's nothing to breathe. There's no air to take in. It's not comfortable. It's not comfortable. And the reason why it's not comfortable is because it's not right. And the reason why it's not right is because this does not work. What what, what this whole situation means, just it does not, it doesn't work. Because it's not supposed to be hard to have conversations about who is abusing who. It's not hard to have conversations about people who are hurting other people. It's not hard to do that. It's hard to make reasons up for why it's okay to hurt people. We think that just because we can see other people cast off their blame on to other people and, and gaslight and make reasons for why they do what they do, we think that because that happens, it's easy to do. It's actually hard to do because you have to believe yourself. A lot of people don't believe the evil that they have in their hearts. A lot of people don't believe themselves. And that's why it's so easy to change, make them have a change of heart. Because they don't believe that what they've been experiencing is truly what it is. Because, and it makes sense. It's a mental self-preservation tactic. And we're not going to be able to talk about this because it's just something that kicks in to just try to preserve your sanity to refuse to believe something because if you if you let go of that if you let go of that it's like a belief it's like a hope it's like a something that that belongs to the world that helps you establish a sense of reality along the life that you live there and it's it's this decision of well if i accept it that means that everything that has happened in my life is not the way that i've been living it and when it comes to terms like red pill that is where that comes in where oh hey something about the dating world isn't exactly what i thought it was but how about when it's not even romance and the issues that life consist of are basically telling you that you've been breathing in the wrong way. It's like finding out that the air you've been breathing is actually toxic this entire time. Then you have to ask yourself, well, why, how am I even able to, to, to live then if 
the air has been toxic all of my life. What does that mean for me? Am I toxic then if I've been breathing in this air? That's that, that's the questions you want to ask once you start to get that feeling that, oh, wait a minute, the way I'm living and what I'm seeing around me, the way that other people are carrying themselves in response to this thing that I don't want to believe is happening and shouldn't be happening because it's not right and I know it's not right because it doesn't make me feel comfortable. And it doesn't make me happy to see that thing happening to one of my own. We cannot possibly walk around this planet and look at other people and really think that they're, they're someone else. We love random encounters. We love meeting strangers that are just happy and smiling. We love these things. The very last thing anybody wants to do is to walk past someone and think that every, every one of the people that they walk past is dangerous. We don't want to do that. That doesn't help you preserve your sanity. It doesn't help you feel safe. It doesn't help you go where you want to go. It doesn't help you do any of those things. I'm upset. I'm upset. I'm angry and sad at the same time. It's a complete injustice. I have endured it bullying for pretty much all of my childhood. And generally when I whenever I enter into a new environment, that has always been the story I have told people. Oh, and I would say it casually too. I always want to make sure people know where I'm coming from when I'm talking to them or interacting with them. Not to protect myself from the way they might assume I'm acting, but to let them know that who I am is real, and where I come from is real, and that when you say what you say, it means something to me. You can't just say everything that you want. I mean, yes, you can, but I'm going to respond to it because it, it has substance. And it's not up to you to know whether that's real or not. You don't have to know that it's substance coming out of your mouth. But if I respond to it, you will know. Because what you say means something to me. I don't say things that don't mean things to me. And if I do, I'll tell you it's a joke. It's communication 101. But I've endured bullying for all of my childhood, all of my childhood. My first girlfriend was was full of physical abuse. And it's only been in this year have I actually been able to articulate it. I wrote it in a journal. Well, actually this one right here. But I, I wrote it in a journal the first time and I almost didn't believe that it, I, I even wrote it out, let alone said it. Because what I'm doing is battling against the way everyone makes excuses for why it's okay for me to hurt. I'm trying to live my life. You don't get to tell me what's okay to impose on my life. You don't get to tell me that. You don't know where I've been. The thing you're telling me that is okay you have no idea if I have survived just another day through it from experiencing it yesterday. You don't know. You don't know. So how can you tell me it's okay? So when I see things like this, this Johnny Depp and Amber Heard situation, oh, I've, 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 I have followed enough of it for all of these years. I've already made my decision and it's why I'm so upset because I get for the first time I finally get to see before my very eyes what I've been experiencing. I finally get to see it. I finally get to see it and it's not happening to me and not because it's the first time. that has ever happened in life. I finally get to see how unfair it is. I finally get to relate to someone. Albert and Preach mentioned something about, about a kid getting slapped and like the whole classroom could hear it. 
And that actually brought a memory back to mind when they said that. I remember, I think it was fifth, sixth grade, and I was in the lunchroom. And there was this girl. I forget how our interaction was even happening. But eventually she's up in my face. She's telling me she's going to slap me. I said, do it. And she lit fireworks across my face. There were kids sitting all around. I said, do it. I repeated myself and she slapped me again. Not a single word from anyone. Because what are you supposed to do? Not what are they going to think of me. Because I know what I should have done. This has nothing to do with maintaining a face, an image, a personality. I didn't have one. I wasn't well known. People didn't vibe with me. No one talked to me. Things didn't make sense. How were they supposed to? No one is talking to me. So it wouldn't have mattered what my reaction was. It wouldn't have mattered if I slapped her across her face for slapping me. It wouldn't have mattered. But I get to see it now. I get to see what everybody else was actually thinking. Thanks, technology. Thank you for showing me what everybody was thinking back then. That's what they were saying. Oh, I'm this big, tall man, right? You think it matters? I want you to see something too. This is what I want you to see. I work out all the time. I work out all the time. And I enjoy it. It makes me feel strong. It makes me feel powerful. It makes me feel like my body is mine. It makes me feel like I can protect myself. It makes me feel like I can protect anyone else if I so choose. But I don't build my body up to deal with anyone else who thinks that this is a playground for abuse. I don't make myself strong for your abuse. And that's what we'll say, right? I was just thinking in my head, I'm not an object. I'm not an object. That's what the women say, right? but I don't build my body up so that you can slap me across my face and tell me because I'm six foot one, 190 pounds, I deserve to get slapped. I can take it. That's what you would say, but what it is is disgusting. What it is, is unreliability. That's what you are, unreliable, useless. You have no sense of foresight. You're not looking at anything. You're not using your brain. You're not even thinking. Your mind doesn't even exist. You don't own it. Someone owns you. You're not even speaking to me. You don't know who I am. You don't even know yourself. So it doesn't matter what I do. 
go ahead and recruit anyone else that you want to protect your image of what you think is supposed to be your safe world. Go ahead. Go ahead and call them. And what are they supposed to do? Ensue violence upon me. So then let's have a war. Let's have a war. Let's not pretend that we, 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 we're fighting to keep the peace. Let's not pretend that. You want to fight. You want to feel like yourself because you don't have a sense of self, do you? What's the best way to do it? Let's rep some skin together. Let's feel some friction. Let's feel some pain, right? That ought to get it going. That way you can feel like something. And let's push it even further. Let's feel like if I can beat this person, if I can see this person on the floor, if I can have them on the ground beneath me and bigger than me, then at least my sense of self, I've restored it because I can see that something else is beneath me. Screw that entire thought process. Yes, I'm huge. Yes, I'm massive and I will be that way. And if need be, I will crush you. And I can do it by accident. I don't have to try and you know it. So go ahead and try me. We think that there's no space for nuance. I, I will crush you with every nuance in my body. How about that? It doesn't matter who started it. What is the image that you're trying to protect? Because it's by that measure, you will think you know how to control me because you lack a sense of self. To be just and right and honest and to defend people when they need to be defended without making excuses. That's the Odds Eve Live. That's the special episode. Enjoy your day.